Hello once again Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Mechanics. Welcome back to another great and exciting unboxing video. So we're getting pretty close to the winter season and I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to unbox a model that I was actually going to unbox at the beginning of 2024 but just didn't get there until now. So what we have here is the amazing Ravel 1980 Jeep Honcho Ice Patrol that comes with the honcho here, as well as this little skidoo. So that'll be a really cool one to open up. So get on your winter coats and let's unbox this great model kit. Here we have a really cool kit from Ravel. Really cool, eh? The 1980 Jeep Honcho Ice Patrol for ages 12 and up, skill level 4 in 124th scale. So this could potentially have actually been a monogram kit because Ravel and monogram merged at one point. But here we have this wonderful artwork by Shepard with the people in the back on a nice mountainy area, maybe up in Colorado or in Canada here, maybe up Northern Alberta or something, British Columbia even. Again, really cool kit and you get this neat little, little uh, guy right there. Over here on the side of the box, you can see some cool accessories. Looks like fuel tanks over here, or uh, gas cans, as well as these nice CB lights up top and our sport mirrors. We also have a folding tailgate with Jeep proudly stamped in the back. We have the AMC engine in here, possibly a 304 cubic inch. And then we've got our skidoo. And up underneath, we've got our frame and everything looking just perfect. On this side of the box, we have the write-up. So our model kit is eight inches long. There are 80 parts in here. It's molded in white with water slide decals. Now uh, it says the Jeep pickup was based on the famous Jeep Wagoneer. It was initially referred to as the Jeep Gladiator and was in production from 1962 to 1988. The Jeep Honcho was a trim package offered on the base J10 model. It was part of a series of special packages offered in the 1970s and 80s. Now this Jeep sitting in the winter scene as well as the Skidoo reminds me of when I was a young kid back in the 1980s and I was in the Boy Scouts. Now back in those days we would do all our winter scouting at Manning Park and we would build these kind of shelters in there to survive in the winter. It was part of our winter scouting experience. Now, Manning Park would get down to minus 40, and I don't think you can actually take scouts into such a cold situation anymore. But back in the 80s, hey, it was no problem, right? So we would make these kind of igloos and uh, shelters like this, where, we, where you would dig underneath a tree and use the natural tree and snowfall as the top of your shelter. And then here we have side views of how to make snow houses and all sorts of cool things. So if you were also a scout back in the 1980s and did that sort of uh, winter scouting, let me know in the comments section down below. Do you have any cool stories to share? I'd also like to check those out. So without further ado, let's take the lid off this box. If I can. Wow, it's really on here. <laughs> the new Ravel. It's always... Oops. Oh, I just ripped the box. Oh, I make it nice and difficult. Come on. Okay, there we go. Wow. <laughs> Wish I didn't rip the box. Okay. Well, it was worth it for you guys. Okay, so here we have the tires. We also have the body. Oh, it's a one piece. That's pretty cool. We also have our clear glass component. And we've got... Oh, that's for the snowmobile, or skidoo. And then we've got this nice set of white parts. We also have our instructions down at the bottom. And I do believe the decals are inside. So let me clear all this out of the way, and then we'll have a nice look. Here we have our instruction sheet for our 1980 Jeep Honcho Ice Patrol. And again, it has the photograph from the box. It also has a write-up here, the read before you begin, and customer service number in case you need help. Inside you have the paint call-outs with the letters in the square boxes, so you know what color corresponds to what part. You also have all the emblems and 
images of what you're going to experience, such as repeating the process twice or even four times, repeat on the other side, optional parts, decals, and assembly cautions, as well as trim off, and a whole bunch of cool things down there. On this side of the instruction sheet, Revell gives you the part name and the number in which it corresponds to, so that you can check to make sure you have all your components. Now we'll get into our assembly steps, and we start off with the transfer case of our transmission, which glues right into here on the frame, and then our exhaust will slip up underneath. Down here in panel two, we have our front and rear suspension, and as you can see, this is a four-wheel drive, so hence the transfer case in step one. And we have our front axle being glued into place, and then our rear axle as well, with the differentials going into that transfer case. Now make sure you have the right axle in the right location. The main clue here as the front axle is you have your tie rods here going into your steering. Down below you have a radius rod, and out back, well it's just this rear axle, you also get your leaf springs in and your differential. Panel 3 shows the shock absorbers being glued in place onto our frame. And then panel 4, this is a step you do four times. You got your wheel back, your tire, and the front wheel being all sandwiched together. Panel 5 shows the wheels being installed onto the axles. Now these have the little button on the end of the axle. So again, this is a push them on once and they won't come off deal. You don't use glue in this step either. So make sure that the holes in the wheels are completely cleaned so that you don't, you know, have a little bit of flash interfering in here. You pop the wheel on, you can't turn the wheel, and then you can't get it off because it's locked in place. Panel 6 shows our amazing American Motors engine being glued together. Here you have the right and left hand side of the engine as well as the transmission molded in place. And then here's where the fun begins. You'll put your carburetor onto your intake manifold, drop the intake manifold into the engine, add on your valve covers, which have the AMC Jeep logo on them, right and left hand side exhaust pipes, front timing chain cover and water pump. Then we've got your alternator down here and the belts and pulleys and your fan. Once this is all assembled, drop it right into the chassis and connect the engine onto this side of the transfer case. Panel 8 shows the body starting to get assembled. So here we have the rear window with these nice slats in the back, which will be glued in place, sort of like Venetian blinds or something. And then we've got our front glass going in. We also have the radiator and radiator support being glued into the body. Now here we're adding on some decals, it looks like and repeating them on the opposite side. Interesting, it says carefully sand off emb the emblem. So I guess you're removing this, oh yes, to apply the decal on the top. So you want it nice and smooth, or you can just hand paint it. Trim details may be painted to match the photos on the box. Here in panel nine, we start to get our rear assembly of the truck. So here we have the outer end of our pickup truck box. These would be your taillights in here. Now these will attach to the tailgate and it's saying to paint the AMC handle silver, although there's nothing going up here to actually show that, but that's what's going on. So this will sandwich in here and then sandwich onto the back of the car. Now be careful here not to apply any glue on those pins because that's what makes your tailgate operate. Then you're going to add your rear bumper on here once this is all glued together. It says here on these little holes to drill them out. Here in panel 10 we have our dashboard and you're going to add in some more decals in here for your gauges as well as the center horn button. There we have our steering console, our column, steering column, sorry, and we've got our steering wheel. Now once you get the dashboard together you're going to drop your seats into your interior bucket and put the dashboard in there. Now here we have panel 11, and this is the body and our interior going down onto the chassis. So you're going to sandwich all that together and glue it in the spots where it's going to be gluing, which seems to be these little pins and holes. And there should be one up front here as well, unless that's for... No, it wouldn't be the radiator. 
So yeah, get this all set up and sandwich it together. Panel 12 shows the final details of our body. And what we have is the bumper with this cool overrider with all those fog lamps in there. And then we've got our grill and the headlights going into the grill, as well as our parking lenses, which you just paint. Then what we have is the grill going onto the body and then our bumper arrangement being glued on here. This is also like a push bar setup as well. Here we have the upper radiator hose being put in, one on the engine block and one into the radiator, and our air cleaner being dropped on as a final part. Now we can't very well go out there without our hood, so luckily we have this one assembly step in step 13. Now you do not glue your hood on, but you just put it in there, Looks like the hinges are kind of bent up on the outside, but once you put the hood down, they would swing up underneath the cowl. Now down here in panel 14, we'll get some more of our winter gear going with our jerry cans, which you can see are being glued together in two parts. Part number 49, two of those, and part number 50. Then over here we've got our roll bar with a fire extinguisher and more fog lamps up top. It's a nice A-frame style with these little bits being glued in for our, our uh, supports in the back. We also have our CB antenna being glued into place. Panel 15 shows our two jerry cans being placed into the back. Now it does say do not glue on those asterisk parts, but you will be gluing in your roll cage up into here. Interesting, these little side pieces mount on top of the box on the rails on the side whereas the lower supports are in those holes we drilled earlier. Here's a toolbox that also gets put in. And now to complete the look, we have our side mirrors, which get glued in place. And again, I think you may have to drill some holes in here. It says to apply decals to the parts shown in step 20. Anyway, interesting, yeah. So would you drill these holes in afterwards? I wonder how you see where they go. At any rate, this looks really cool overall, and you have a gas filler door right here molded in place. So once we take a look at the body, I'd like to see that. Next up, we get into our little snowmobile here, and what we have is the bottom of the snowmobile, and I do believe this is a light that goes in the front. Then once that's all complete, glue the top of the snowmobile down. Here's our little tracks for the snowmobile, which get glued together because it's central in the back. Then we have our skis up front for steering. Again, really cool looking thing. Down here in panel 19, we get our glass being glued onto the body, and there are some decals coming into place here. Then we get our steering assembly gluing in here, much like a real motorbike, and a couple of gauges, as well as some other decals on this side. Once our model is complete, here on the back we have our decal arrangements. So we have these covered fog lights up top with the Jeep emblems. We also have the honcho license plate and a few decals up here. Looks like a J10 or something. Honcho on the back, Jeep lettering, as well as some decals. Oh, that's a modern Jeep logo. And it looks like the um, American Star from World War II. It's a Jeep. Oh, that's your toolbox there. Sorry, trying to see what it says on the last bit. It's a Jeep thing, I think it says. So we got our jerry can with a little gas uh, decal as well. Oh, the J10. Okay, so J10 honcho. And then decals. Now, we're going to take a look at the decals at the end in color. So this will be quite a neat thing to see. There's also a decal on the ends of the wheels. An American Motors one, I take it. Now we get to take a look at the plastic components, starting off with our body. And there's a lot going on here. We have all this detail molded up underneath in the wheel arches. Again, this is quite a cool looking casting. One solid piece body. Uh, we do have mold marks up here, but I mean, hey, what do you expect? This thing would be quite interesting to tool up, actually. There's that gas filler cap right there on the side. Nicely done. Some texture in the back. Okay, look at all this. Battery windshield wiper bottles, I guess, uh, park, um, sorry, your master cylinder, and then your heater motor over there. Not bad. Would be nice if these were separate parts that you were gluing on. Again, I do believe this is a monogram kit. I'd have to look on Scalemates to make sure. 
But overall, I think uh, for what it is, it's pretty cool. I mean, when do you get a honcho? Our next parts tree shows our interior bucket as well as the bucket seats, our hood, and the wheel backs. So not too much to see here. The detail is quite nice on the seats, although a bit soft in the molding. There's our interior bucket with the floor pedal down below. So this would be an automatic. A couple of mold marks under the hood. Overall though, basic and probably quite easy to assemble. Our next parts tree is quite wonderful in itself. We have the amazing tailgate with the big Jeep letters stamped in. We also have our really cool looking old vintage wheels. I remember this style. This was sort of associated with off-road vehicles back in the 80s. I've got our steering wheel here. Typical AMC style. Got one of these in my Gremlin. We also have our steering column. And we have the dashboard and the back of the pickup truck box. So taking a look at our dashboard. Again, nicely detailed. Could easily put those decals in there or even attempt hand painting the gauges. Jeep emblem stamped in the back is nice and bold and crisp and clear. We also have those blinds in the back. Really cool. Again, you've got your mold marks, so sand those nice and flat. Paint over them. Make it look good. Overall, not bad, but again, very simplistic. Our next parts tree includes the front grille, our front axle, our rear axle, the shock absorbers, the little teeny tiny air cleaner. I thought that was bigger. Okay, and then we've got our firewall. We also have our V8 engine in here, our CB radio antenna, fans, the transfer case, and those cool mirrors, which I thought were going to be chrome. But at any rate, let's uh, take a look at this up in the camera. Again, look at that nice grill detail. Looks like the real thing. I did a little bit, bit of bodywork on somebody's Jeep Comanche, and it was much the same as this. There's our radiator. It's also got the fan shroud in here. Again, watch for those mold marks, which are everywhere. But uh, yeah, overall, pretty cool. Now, I was also thinking about all those Scooby-Doo episodes where they go in the winter type thing. You know, they're, they're fighting the big uh, snow beast or whatever. But have you ever noticed, if you're a Scooby-Doo fan, that uh, those winter costumes that the Scooby-Doo gang wear, starting back in 1969 when the cartoon first came out, they, every time you see them, even up to the most recent Scooby-Doo, we're talking like 2024, if they do a winter episode, they're all still wearing those same snowsuits that they had back in 1969. They've never changed the design of those snowsuits, which I always thought was cool about the Scooby-Doo cartoons. Our next parts tree is the actual chassis itself, the front and rear bumpers, carburetor, intake manifold, exhaust pipes, as well as the shock absorbers, possibly for the front, our timing chain cover, our rear exhausts, or sorry, our exhaust manifolds, and our uh, radiator hose. Kind of lost it there. All right, so again, we've got the chassis. Very simplistic. And what does it say on here? It says, Ravel Incorporated, 1981, China. Interesting. They keep uh, 1981 on there. So again, this model kit is from back in the day then, 1981 basically built the year after the real thing came out. Which is interesting, because wouldn't you think it would have been molded maybe the year before it came out? Or like in the same year it came out? But we got 1981 under there. Next up we have our service truck kind of components. There's our two jerry cans. We've got our front push bar with the lights in there, as well as the rear roll bar with a fire extinguisher and the side supports for the roll bar. We've got our tool case, and I do believe, oh, these are the, the big lamps for up top on that bar. So there's a lot of light coming off of this vehicle. I guess that's to help find people in the snow, but boy, it would be blinding, wouldn't it? Boo, all those lights coming on, one, two, three, four, and then five, six up top. And it would really be blinding, but I guess that's what you need in the ski patrol. 
And speaking of the ski patrol, here is the bonus feature for our model, which of course is the skidoo or the snowmobile. And there's the top, the bottom, the tread, and our skis as well as the front steering yoke. I believe that's what it's called. So yeah, there it is. Again, nice detail on here, very uh, futuristic for the era. You got pads for your knees, a seat to sit on, as well as some vents and the gauges down below. Again, really cool. Too bad it doesn't, you can't uh, have the motor in here. That would, that would have been a neat little trick, showing the front. I don't, I don't even know. I guess these uh, come apart, you know, like pop open top and bottom. If in, if you have owned one of these snowmobiles in the past, let me know how they actually operate. Where is the engine? Well, obviously it's underneath here, right? But yeah, I guess it would be up front. There would be a chain going to the back and that would be onto the wheels, much like a motorbike. Here we have our clear components, which I'm going to leave in the bag because I've been finding that if I cut the bags open, the clear just keeps sliding out and then um, it's everywhere, right? <laughs> Getting scratched up. And the bags are to protect that. So what we have is our square headlights, which back in the early 80s, they were quite popular. Even the late 70s, square headlights. Then we've got our glass. It's a little side bit to go into the no drafts on the side. And then we've got our glass for the snowmobile, which is quite bent over and cool looking, as well as that little front headlight. So overall, the glass is quite nice and scratch resistant. And here we have our four tires for our honcho. And these are actually smoothed off, so there's no raised lettering that say Goodyear or Firestone or anything like that. But at one point in some of my kits that have these tires, it does say that. So I think it's more in recent times that maybe they lost the licensing for that sort of thing. But if you have any tire decals, you can always add those onto the side. But overall, I really do like these tires. They have a nice chunky tread as well as the sidewalls. Again, something you would want in the snow. Now I have a few model kits that would actually be cool to see in a diorama all together with this Jeep Honcho. The first being the GMC pickup truck with the snow plow by Ravel. The next would be the 1963 Ford F100 camper pickup, recently re-released by AMT. And that would be followed up by the Johan 1970 Cadillac Eldorado hardtop customizing kit especially in this alpine type of getup with the skis and the ski rack in the back and the really cool alpine style wood sides with all the different ski logos. In addition, I have these really cool Limax figures to add to a winter diorama, like these kids having a snowball fight here. These other kids are going down a slope in a toboggan. We also have some trash cans with raccoons and a Santa Claus. Then I have this mailbox for Santa, as well as a Christmas party sign, and to top it all off, a lighted Christmas tree. So now the moment you've been waiting for, let's take a look at the decals in color. Check this out, you actually get two versions. You can build a summertime honcho right here, or the cool wintertime honcho. We even have some numbers for the snowmobile, as well as all these cool decals down here. Look at these, they look like tire trims or some, something for the wheels. Red wall with white wall on the inside? I don't know. Oh, I know what they are. They're the outer rings for the wheels, of course. And that was quite typical, the white wheels with the red ring around them. They've got the J10 as well as the Jeep lettering, two different ones, one for summer, one for winter. It's a Jeep thing. There you've got the honcho as well and the gas for the gas tanks. Really cool. A couple of license plates here. We have America's Dairyland with Wisconsin. Hello, Wisconsin, for the 70s show. And then, is that a more updated Wisconsin? I can't really read that part, but that's a haunt show right there. I think it is modern Wisconsin and original 1980s Wisconsin. That's kind of neat. Keep it in the same state. There's the current Jeep logo. Again, really cool stuff on here. Loads of decals, loads of options. Well, I hope you enjoyed this look at our 1980 Jeep Honcho Ski Patrol truck, and I hope it's one that you can add to your collection as well. 
So if you really enjoyed this video, let us know in the comments down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you're the first to see it. Maybe you'll get this as a Christmas present. If you want to uh, see what we have for sale, visit us at www.monster-hobbies.ca. Go under the plastic model section and find the automobiles. Sure is great, especially for winter. So, until next time, everybody, happy model building and have fun out there and have a good holiday season coming up.